So good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Tide Masterclass. So today I'm really excited to host this special Cyber Monday event, um, during which we'll be talking to you about how you can save time on your employee and company expenses, um, and share with you some exciting offers and prizes for this special Cyber Monday. Um, we have a fantastic panel today. Thank you for being here. And uh, I will let them introduce themselves in a minute. Um, before we start, just a quick tour of Zoom and for those who haven't used it before. So depending on how you are watching us today, there is a toolbar at the top or the bottom where you'll see a chat room and a QA room. Uh, you'll be, we'll be doing a Q&A at the end of the event, so please make sure you use it to ask all the questions you have throughout the session. If you have any comments, please do use the chat room for that. I will also be pasting in the chat room some very useful links that our panelists will mention later on in the session. Okay, so I'm going to, for the ones of you that, um, you know, do not know Tide, I'm going to introduce um, I'm going to introduce and give you a quick tour of who we are. So we are the uh, fastest growing online business current account provider in the UK, and we currently have over 250,000 members. Our aim is to provide our members with a service that saves them both time and money when it comes to their business banking. Um, so we are great for SMEs, startups, and freelancers, as there is no credit checks or startup or monthly fees. So this allows you to even try us alongside your current business account provider and see how we can help you save time and money. Um, so, um, you know, the sign-up process is really quick and easy. It takes between five and ten minutes and you'll then receive your sort code and account number with the card following uh, in the next few days in the post. Um, the app itself is, once again, uh, easy to set up and use, if I may say so myself. Uh, we have a huge amount of in-app products that will make your, your banking a lot easier. Um, you can see a few information on the screen right now, but just to give you a few products that I think are particularly helpful for our members. We have an auto-categorization auto tool, <laughs> which helps you um, and auto-categorize all the transaction coming in and out of your accounts. We also have um, our invoice feature, which allows you to create fully customized and send invoices directly through your app, saving you loads of time. And uh, for our limited businesses uh, members, you can also, for instance, um, divide your uh, account into four sub accounts. So we're, you're able to have pots for its marketing budget, for instance, taxes, events, or whatever will help you save time dealing with your business banking. Um, something I also wanted to mention today are our membership plans. Um, so we have some fantastic plans to help our members even further with the business, um, including Type Plus Cashback that you can see on our screen right now, which is one of our latest membership plans. It is um, a plan that gives you 0.5% cashback on everything you spend with your Type cards. It also gives you 150 free transfers, 24 seven um, access to a legal helpline, which is for both your personal and business questions, of course, um, and a lot of different member perks. So I really wanted to mention this membership because obviously it's our latest one. And also on this Cyber Monday event, we wanted to give you you know, a, a bit of a boost and uh, offer to our members joining us today live, um, you know, the possibility to upgrade to our plus cashback membership for free to try it out and, um, you know, um, get some cash back into your account. So hopefully you find it helpful. Um, so we also have a very exciting cash price draw for our members that have ordered a team card this week. Um, team cards, I will let Ali mention and, and explain to that to you a bit later on in the webinar. Um, but so please, we will do the cash price draw uh, just after the Q&A. So make sure you stay along for that. Um, Great, um, I will talk to you a bit later on um, about Tide and how to make sure you can keep up to date with uh, what we're doing here and in terms of products and masterclasses. So um, without further ado now, because we have, I can see a lot of you joining us live. Thank you so much. Welcome to this masterclass. Um, I will let our fantastic um, panelists introduce themselves. Um, starting with Emma. Good morning, Emma. 
Good morning, everyone. Hello, I'm Emma White. I'm one of the partners at A4G LLP. We're chartered accountants and business advisors, and we specialise in working with grown businesses. So over to... Thank you, Emma. Yeah, Ali, if you could introduce yourself, please, as well. Of course. Uh, morning, everyone. Uh, thanks, Val, for the intro. Uh, so my name is Ali Travis. I'm VP of Business Services at Tide. So uh, Business Services is the area in Tide where we look after finance and admin. So this is where we build features around getting people, helping people get paid on time, managing their expenses and expenditure, and preparing things for end of year. Um, so uh, I, I'll be, this is the, the expense products and team cars products I'll be talking through within my area. And uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to telling you all a bit, a bit about it later on. Thank you so much, Ali. And the first question I wanted to start with today is why is Tide um, interested in this topic? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, Look, uh, Tide's mission has always been to save businesses time and money. And uh, this stat really kind of goes right to the heart of it. So the average time spent by a UK small business owner on finance and admin, which is getting, you know, doing your invoicing, getting paid on time, making sure you're tax compliant, sorting out payroll, is 48 days in the year. Right? Now, we all know that small business, running a small business is difficult, and small businesses in the sector are very underserved by finance tools. So that's really why we're in business. That's what Tide's all about. Uh, valid go to the next slide so what we're looking for what we found pretty interesting though is when we started doing proprietary research to understand this topic better we found that the biggest topic by some way was expenses so the biggest admin struggle for businesses our membership was actually keeping track of expenses both um, making sure that you know the company was spending within control but also preparing digital records for accountants for end of year this is the number one struggle and valid go to the next slide this is the really the killer stat, which is the majority of our members handle physical receipts only. We call them shoe boxes. People who keep physical receipts in shoe boxes and you know, keep purely paper records. And um, another about 20, 25% do something similar, but they just kind of store folders of images on a, on a computer file somewhere. So these are people who are really doing this process manually. And what that comes to, and, and Emma's much better place to tell you why that's a bad idea, but uh, what these people end up doing is um, you, know, you have an end of year, you firstly don't have up-to-date information about your business expenditure, but also you're setting yourself up for an end of year crunch or end of year rush. And well, we'll come on to how we sort of solve these problems, but maybe Val, I can hand back to you because we can explore this topic more. Absolutely. No, thank you, Ellie. Those uh, numbers are quite um, scary. And that leads me to my next question, Emma. Um, can you tell us why um, is doing your expensive on a regular basis actually quite important? Brilliant. Thanks, Val. Yeah, I think um, I think it's probably the typical expectation that business owners do this for their accountants. You know, it's it's boring admin um, that is for our purposes and our purposes alone. Um, and what I would say is actually, you know, if, if you do this regularly and properly, it really should influence the way you're able to run your business and improve your profitability. So one of the typical things that I don't think gets dealt with particularly well um, is sort of really identifying the types of costs that businesses have and ensuring that your costs are logged against those categories. So the three main categories we've got up on the screen here. So cost of sales are items that are directly related to delivering your product or service. So that might be that you buy a box, you're printing it with a pattern and selling it on. Well, you know, the purchase of said box, say, um, that is the cost of sale is directly related to your end sale. Okay. And it's important to log these items because that is one of your significant factors in your costing. So how you cost your work for clients, that is obviously your biggest factor there. But then the next level of costing is obviously your direct costs. Now, these are the types of costs that tend to go up in sort of jumps. So it might be that you've got, you know, one man working a machine or whatever it is, but you, but whether you're doing one pound of sales, you're going to have that fixed sort of direct cost. But then obviously to grow your sales, they jump up in stages. Now, again, they are a significant factor of your costing process. And quite often, um, people, when they're doing their costing, they'll put kind of an estimated percentage in as, oh, this is, this is towards my direct costs and this is towards my overheads. Well, actually, 
doing this stuff regularly means you can sense check your costing, which is really, really important. And it means you can pick up any problems with you the way you cost very early on. And then obviously you've got your overheads and that might be things like your office costs, um, maybe manning reception, uh, the printer hire, you know, the things that you're going to have that, that might creep up as you grow, but they won't take significant jumps. They will go up more, much more naturally with your business growth. And they're easy to keep a check on, you know, the things like checking your utilities and things, but it's really your cost of sales and your direct costs um, that really factor into your costing. And you'd be surprised the amount of times that I see direct costs sort of mixed in with overheads. Um, and that, you know, that can be a just harder for businesses to manage their expenses. So if we move on to the next slide, I'm going to talk about some of the th expenses that, you know, what people can claim and things. So what's deductible and what isn't? I think that's a common question we answer as accountants. Um, and it's always much easier if you put things in your records that you think um, you're not sure about rather than accountants trying to eke out of you all the things that you might spend that you that are kind of hidden in the background and on, on an accounting system. But kind of these are the typical areas, I think, where people either don't claim it or don't claim it properly. So if you've got a company vehicle, obviously everything to do with running that vehicle can go through the business. Now that's fuel, servicing, MOTs, tyres, but it's also things like, you know, if you're having to top up the oil and bits like that that you're so used to paying out of pocket that you just tend to pay it out of your pocket and treat it as a personal expense whereas actually if it's a company car all those bits go into it now if it isn't a company car but you're using your personal car for business and um, what a lot of people forget to do is claim mileage um, I think they just a lot of people just tend to pop in the odd petrol receipt but actually the mileage allowance set by HMRC is quite generous because it takes into account wear and tear on cars so for each car that's used in the business that's a personal car you can claim 45p for the first 10,000 miles sort of per car per tax year and that's that can work out quite nicely for owner managers to, to get some sort of tax-free cash in their pocket then subsistence is a uh, quite a big grey area. I think most because it's grey, most people don't bother claiming it at all. Now, subsistence is the difference between if you were going to an office every day, you normally take your pat lunch, you take you take some snacks, maybe some fruit, whatever, chocolate bar, and your sandwiches. Subsistence is really the stuff when you're on the go. Um, you know, it is where you can't have, you can't take a pat lunch. You're further away than you'd expect to be from work. It is the sandwiches, the bottles of water, the coffees, and all of that is claimable. But I think again, most people are so used to sort of having coffees and stuff that they tend to put it on their personal card and just don't bother claiming it. So that is again a good little allowance that is is claimable. And obviously what you've got to remember is it's important to know all these little costs that add up to how you're running your business so that you can really assess your profitability. So a big question at the moment is staff entertaining, particularly because <laughs> there's not a lot you can do remotely. Um, but the usual allowance is £150 per employee per tax year. Um, and that is inclusive of the VAT. That's on the basis that you include all your staff. Mm -hmm. um so it's not kind of departmental lunches it's it is sort of meant for your sort of christmas or summer parties and i'm sure we'll uh, all be ring fencing a big summer blowout next year um and then there's your entertainment so your entertainment of clients now clients or key suppliers this you know this is often quite a critical cost to doing business is how you build those relationships and nurture them um, and actually, whilst you can't claim tax relief on it or the VAT back, you should still be recording that as part of your business expenses, just because it's really useful for you to see what you're spending on that activity and then track sort of what sort of business you're getting out of that. And obviously, if, even for things that you can't claim VAT on and you can't claim tax relief on, you as a director are not taxed on drawing that money out of the business. Um, and particularly if you're a high rate taxpayer, that's quite essential. So I think, again, that's the sort of thing that 
where a lot of us enjoy those lunches with customers or suppliers um, we think oh well we'll pay for this out of pocket you know it goes on personal credit card you don't worry about it but you really should because um, it's just wasted wasted saving otherwise so they're the, they're the kind of key ones that I'd say say to look out for Thank you so much, Emma. I think uh, that was absolutely super helpful and I'm sure the attendees will agree with me, especially, you know, making sure you claim those, right, and not consider them just too small because they do add up. Um, Ali, I wanted to ask you, um, what does Tide uh, help to solve this problem for SME, actually? Yeah, sure. So, um, uh, if you skip to the next slide, uh, Val. So, uh, actually, we've skipped a little bit. I'll tell you a little bit about it and then we can maybe come back. So, um, uh, oh, actually, Val, if you hit pause for a sec, I'll, I'll talk a little bit through about some of the features we have. So, um, um, of course, as Emma's saying, you need to keep track of these sort of different areas of expenditure. Uh, Val can hit pause. Um, and so what we do is we allow people uh, to each of their individual transactions to categorize them, right? So there's fuel, there's meals, all things that are reasonably intuitive to you. You can also set your own uh, categories. And what we'll do is we'll actually remember them. So we have automatic categorization logic. So we'll remember typical merchants you use. We'll automatically classify transactions based on those categorization. We also allow you to upload receipts. Now, HMRC require for you to have you know, records, whether those be digital or physical, of all the different receipts, you have different expenses. So what we do is we allow people the ability to attach those to transactions as well. So keep financial records and keep things organized. Now, that then becomes pretty useful when you're speaking to your accountant, right? So you can give them the, your full set of financial records already categorized with your input. Um, something which we're showing here is actually when we started thinking more about what, you know, what more advanced expenses features we can do to help save people the most time, we found that a lot of people, you know, they'll have these kind of big uh, shoe boxes, they'll have these big collections of receipts which have not been yet been digitized. And we thought, okay, well, perhaps we can help solve this problem with you know, the ability to organize people's receipts in a specific way. And so that's why we've got this receipt importer feature. Uh, Val, if you hit play, I can kind of walk people through this. Sorry. Uh, on the video. Oh, Sorry. Back, uh, back a wee bit. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Oh, yeah. So if we imagine we've got, uh, you know, um, maybe one of our sales teams been up um, at a kind of business trip, they will typically have a large number of receipts on them. Um, now, what we do is we built the ability, what, of course, if you take photos and scan them within Tide, if we have a little look, okay, we look, this is the timeline. As you can see, uh, there's a whole list of transactions there. You can see Sainsbury's there, there's a £2.20, which I think Emma would maybe on a good day classify as subsistence, <laughs> something claim back as an expense. Now, you need to have a digital record. It's no, no good just having this record as we see it here. You need to have a receipt associated with it. So what um, our members are doing here is they're looking through their pictures of receipts. You can, of course, take a load of photos on the moment. And then what we've, what we've done just there, hasn't happened rather quickly, is we've scanned the text on the receipt. We've picked up words like Sainsbury's, £2.20, etc. What we've done is we've um, run it, we have a sort of decision uh, data science model. What it does is it runs against a transaction history and we found a match. Right? So this receipt matches this transaction. And then we've said, yes, please do match. Um, and so that... Um, and what's happened in the background is that receipt has automatically been, uh, been attached to the transaction, as we can see here. So now we have a good digital record of that. You can here recategorize it. It might not be meals, it might be something else. And you can even add a note for your accountant. So here, Emma, this was uh, when I took, this is one of the things from the business trip up to Edinburgh, for example. And so this, um, when done as a big group, the idea here is that you can just throw your receipts to Tide and we will organize them for you. And we're working at building a integration to accounting software. So this information will automatically flow all the way to your accountant. Um, all right, Val, that's a little bit about kind of the things we have in uh, around the expenses space, particularly for, you know, um, sole one-man bands or sort of companies run by one person. But maybe Emma, I think, was going to sort of talk through some of the other, other considerations around expensing. Absolutely. Thank you for talking us through the receipt importer. Um, Ali and Emma, um, I will let you um, talk a bit more about the commonly uh, missed expenses now. Yeah, so I think as Ali's saying, the, the trouble with the shoebox, and I, I would say almost the journey to the shoebox, um, can be that receipts just get lost along the way. You know, it's like you stick it in your pocket, it goes in the washing machine, um, or it gets chucked in the side of the car, and actually, you know, when your car's cleaned out, they just all get thrown away. So norm normally the journey to the shoebox can result in 
receipts going missing. Um, I know I always get in trouble from our uh, sort of finance person from my train tickets getting swallowed. So with with something like the receipt in Porto, it's fantastic. You can take that photo and log it before these things get lost. And it just means you are claiming everything you you need to claim really. But actually there's, you know, there's, there's some others that sort of get commonly missed. Um, I think now mobile phones are like an extension of our hand where we can't be without them. That is quite often considered sort of a personal expense, you know, uh, and, and that alone is something people generally don't bother claiming for. And actually it's, you know, it's a reasonable amount of money each month and is how a lot of us conduct our sort of business day with use of sort of mobile devices. So that's definitely one to make sure that you're claiming. But there's also things like use of home as office. So if you're well, probably like most of us at the moment working from home, there's an allowance for the sort of additional water and electricity you're using for being at home. So it's always important to, to take that into account. And that's, that's normally done on kind of the floor space for the available um, place you're using. Alternatively, that's based on a mortgage property. But if you're renting and you've obviously you've deliberately decided on having a two bedroom place, say, because you need the spare room as the office, part of that rent can also go into that charge. And I think that's that's quite commonly missed. Mm -hmm. If you're in an industry as well where you're doing your clothes are getting kind of unusually dirty and that can be sort of building or you know any sort of site visits or even even things like hairdressing and stuff where you are having to clean your clothes more regularly there is a small allowance for laundry and cleaning of kind of one one pound to two pound a week which again is allowable and i think particularly with businesses now we're probably all doing a lot more laundry than uh, we would have done previously washing all the two towels so you know all these little things they it seems like something that you wouldn't bother with and you might not bother with it on a monthly basis but certainly it's worth a review at the end of the year now if any of you are starting up a business obviously they'll you tend to have your suite of IT equipment at home don't you I think we all do now you know we have our laptop our iPad our phone whatever we're using our printers or whatever now quite often when people start businesses they don't necessarily consider that as something they're introducing to the business because again it's this whole divide between me and the business you just tend to think of it as one don't you so all those little things you can kind of introduced to the business and you are owed that money back based on the kind of current market value um, and again all helps doesn't it and it just helps identify what you've done to set that business up so they're the kind of little bits and pieces that I think get forgotten when we're busy so if we go to the next slide so one of the easiest ways to keep track of your expenses and to really keep up with your competition now is to use a cloud accounting software so you know there's sage quickbooks i mean our preferred cloud accounting software is zero just because it seems to be built with business owners in mind which might be a strange thing for an accountant to say but um i like the fact that it's really functional for clients um and it just means that you guys are more likely to want to use it and interact with your accountant better but it can direct link with your bank feed and then as Ali was saying the receipt importer then works really really nicely to help you keep all that stuff in one place so you've got an online document storage then for your receipts and you can issue your invoices from it on the go and it just means that you can take advantage of that that sort of downtime where you might be sitting waiting for someone to turn up for an appointment you can just check who owes you money and chase a few debts up or raise that invoice while you're sat on the train and it just as Ali says it helps cut down on all that admin time or the kind of lost time um, if you are on a desktop package and it's got to wait till you get home to do it so uh, yeah absolutely brilliant and I love the receipt importer that tied it for out it's brilliant fantastic well thank you so much Emma and thank you Ali for showing us the receipt importer one thing I wanted to ask you Emma is that we you have talked a lot about your recommendations and um, what we can do to make sure we do our expenses regularly but uh, we often learn from our mistakes um, so what are the common mistakes to avoid 
Yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, it's an interesting one, isn't it? I mean, as an accountant, obviously, I like to be quite organised, but I think we can turn things into big jobs. And I think it's like anything, isn't it? If, it, if it's a big job, it's put on the to do later list. Whereas actually, you know, what we're really trying to do and encourage our clients to do is you're really using it as a cross checker for your costing, you know, and particularly at the moment, like break even budgeting, you should be constantly checking the actuals versus the what you're expecting to happen um, because it all just feeds into the profitability of the business um, so yeah not claiming for everything is always feels a bit criminal to me you know it's hard work running running a company and you should get the upside um, of making sure you can claim your expenses and stuff and also having clear sight of what it costs you to run that business but a lot of the softwares you can look at, I mean, for many of you, I'm sure you've had to go back to looking at what your break even is, you know, with the concerns over what can we trade and everything. A lot of people have kind of gone back to basics and looked at break even point again. Now, obviously that your budgets and your actuals, you can use software to really compare all these things and just make sure that they're aligned, allowing you to make quicker decisions. Um, and obviously cash is king. So if you're not being paid for it, the sale hasn't finished. So, you know, it is important to keep on top of your cash at the moment. Yeah, so I think they're probably the common mistakes really is try not to overcomplicate it and make it as simple as possible. Thanks, Val. Absolutely. No, thank you. And um, definitely making a big job of it is definitely something to avoid. Um, so thank you so much for this, Emma. Um, now, Ali, I wanted to ask you if, you know, you can tell us uh, more about how Tide help its members and especially those who have employees that have expenses themselves. Sure, well, if you go to the next slide now, I think we have something on this. Uh, yeah, so um, we have a feature called Teamcast. Um, and what that does is, you know, it's not just your own expenses that can be claimed back. Of course, your employees can too. So if you have salespeople, co-founders, senior directors and so on who make uh, expenses on behalf of the business, those can also be reclaimed and should be, keep, be kept track of. Now, our team cards feature allows you to issue a card for a, another individual and for you to then, um, uh, so they'll have their own sort of Tide MasterCard, which they can use to spend. Um, uh, we, you as the account owner can see, uh, keep track of their expenditure. So every single transaction they make, you can, it will be tagged against their name and you'll get a real-time notification of, say, Valentine has spent £2.50 in boots. You can keep track of things that way. So this, uh, you know, um, is a sort of widely used feature. We have um, uh, around 20,000 of our members actually make use of this feature and order cards for their team members. We strongly recommend it if you have any employees for you to uh, issue them with a team card. Um, there's also a number of um, quite interesting product developments we have on this front. So Valerie is the next stage. Um, we've, we've been working on improving this. We have a lot of, kind of we've had a lot of feedback from the members who do use our existing team cards feature. Um, I'm pleased to say that we have a number of things uh, which are rolling out soon. Um, we will grant your team card holders access to view their transactions, right? So they will be able to see, um, you know, uh, um, see themselves their spend and be able to manage their card. So this is like freeze it if they lose track of it, uh, cancel it, um, show the pin, et cetera. So they'll have, they'll have uh, the ability to see their transactions and actually manage their own card as well. We also saw some feedback, particularly in lockdown, that people want the card issued to their home address. Right? It's no good sending the card to the kind of office address or the trading address anymore. People want the card driven to the home address, which means they need to be able to activate it. So we're making a few changes there. Another one, a really big one is limits, right? Um, particularly if it's for a salesperson or potentially someone slightly more junior in your organization, you really want the ability to um, set limits on their spend, whether that be £2,000 a month, whether it be for certain types of activities. So for example, not being able to take out cash or not being able to spend on e-commerce or limiting the types of merchants they can spend with. So no, for example, gambling. Right? So we're introducing rolling out limits of team uh, cards as well. Um, and then of course, allowing the team card holders to do their expenses at them. So this is add comments, categorize transactions, and upload receipts of their own, or even make use of our, uh, uh, our receipt importer feature. Um, really what we're trying to do is, you know, save our members time and money by passing on responsibility for certain actions to their team members. So yes, yeah, an exciting roadmap coming up. Um, really we'll start kind of rolling some of these features out very soon uh, to our kind of trial audience and getting feedback. So pleased to be uh, announcing this today. 
Fantastic. Thank you so much, Ali. This is something to really looking forward to. Um, now we will we'll move on to the hints, tips and resources slide. And um, so Emma will talk us through it. Please um, do uh, look in the chat room as I will put the resources link um, that Emma will uh, talk about um, in the same time. Brilliant. Thank you. So, yeah, I mean, because I would I would highly recommend a cloud accounting package. I think desktop packages are um, a real bind now for businesses. And if you want to stay in front of your competition, you know, use a cloud accounting package that links with Tide. And then your bank transactions are imported daily. So you really have got live data for you to manage your business with. Um, keep on top of your invoicing and expenses each day or week, you know, but just try and be a little bit religious about setting that time aside and getting it done. Um, particularly your invoicing at the moment, you know, if, if the work's done, get it invoiced because your payment days might, might drag now a bit. Um, you know, using tools to make you more efficient, as you say, cut down on that admin time for doing some of this stuff. So using Tide's receipt importer will really help and work well with a cloud accounting package. Manage your cash really closely. You know, it's the main reason for small business failure after all. I think a lot of business owners, they don't like doing the credit control. That's fine. Get someone else to do it. But make sure you're on top of your credit control, particularly at the moment. You know, there's a lot of businesses that have had lending that maybe shouldn't. So you just don't know who you're trading with at the minute. Um, and, and the cash isn't yours until it's in that bank account. So just make sure you are on top of that. Use your numbers to adapt your pricing or, or assess your efficiencies. You know, don't. I think you need to think of these things like they are, they are fluid. It's not, I've set my price now and it's going to stand for X amount of years. We all know the costs of goods and materials are changing all the time. So just, just constantly use it for a bit of reflection. And obviously work with an accountant who you can go to for help and advice. I mean, we shared the link to our website. So we've actually got, we developed, we've got quite a lot of advice on our website, but we developed the coronavirus business hub back in March where we shared daily content just to help owner managers try and keep on top of the things that they needed to consider next because um, I think it was a bit of a minefield and also I've put on there one of our tools that's like a little five minute cash flow tool that just you just assess what's in the bank account and what liabilities have you come, got coming up and how much should you have set aside for those and then you can use some of the great accounts Tide have for just sort of trying to put that money aside and plan better. Fantastic. Well, thank you so, so much, Emma. This is, um, this is just really helpful uh, resources. Thank you for sharing this today with our uh, audience. Um, just before we move on to the Q&A and the cash price row, uh, please take a minute uh, to put your, all your questions in the Q&A box. Uh, depending on how you're watching us live today, you might have the um, toolbox uh, on bottom or top of your screens. So please do make sure you, um, you put your question in the Q&A box. I will give you a couple of minutes uh, to do this and I will um, just also paste now a few um, useful links in the uh, chat room, that's it, um, because I um, also wanted to uh, remind you that, you know, the team cards Ali talked about are included in our paid plan memberships for free. So you can, you can, you know, order them directly within your app in the moment. It's very easy to do that. Um, if you have any questions after this masterclass about our membership plans, about Tide, about team cards, please do reach out to us. We'd love to chat to you and help you with that. Um, also, um, if you want to keep up to date with our events and what's up, um, with Tide, I have shared all the links in the chat box so you can keep on top of this. And um, also wanted to remind you that um, we are sending a Tide goodie bag to all of you guys that are watching us live today. So make sure you uh, keep an eye out on the post. Uh, we hope um, we hope you like it really. Um, okay, well now I think we have a good numbers of questions. Um, what I will do is I will leave it to our 
panel to um, select the questions they want to answer. Uh, sure. Well, gosh, a lot of them have just come through now. Um, let me quickly just, what I can do, perhaps so if I start, I can read out a couple that I've answered myself, just so everyone's kind of got visibility. And then I'll pick, I'll whiz through the open ones. And then what I'll do is I'll hand over to you, because there's quite a few ones specifically about what's kind of eligible for yeah. to be excluded. So, um, so firstly, are we going to allow an in-app search so we can search transactions by reference? Yes. So at the moment, we, of course, allow people to export lists of transactions. So you can do this kind of filtering and seeing what your expenditure is on Sainsbury's over the course of the year through whatever means you might want, Excel and whatever data manipulation tool. But we do receive a lot of feedback because we want to be able to search for individual transactions in that. So yes, we're building this. Also building the ability not just for you to search by reference or merchant, but to be able to search by team members. So you can find, okay, so for example, what has Emma been spending all that money on over the last month? Um, on the topic of whether, I got a question here on whether this will be able to be viewable later. So yes, this video is being recorded. Uh, Val, how will people access this video once it's kind of made available online? Absolutely. So I have shared with you all the Events Leaks and our YouTube page link. We will also post the video so on our YouTube channel, but also on our blog post uh, as a watch again. So make sure to check out for this. Um, okay, uh, I'm seeing a question here on how soon do the team cards update. These are being built in earnest. I can tell you some of them are in kind of initial testing already. So we'll be rolling them out from well, what we said Q1, so really before March of next year. Um, uh, um, from Rory, I see a question here. Will all team cards be blue? But if you're a plus user, will they be black as well? Actually, all team cards are on blue. So the plus and premium card colors actually only affect the primary account holders cards. Team member cards are always blue. We're bringing out a update soon so that actually mark the cards as being for, for a team member. Um, uh, so you can help kind of distinguish between them both physically and also on Apple Pay. Um, got a question here about team cards. Um, does it work in different countries? Yes. So team cards can be used. We're part of the MasterCard network. Unfortunately, that means they use pretty much everywhere in the world. We also don't charge any uh, sort of FX or conversion fee on top. We just use the standard MasterCard exchange rate. So I can tell you, I use my personal Tide card for all uh, bookings of, you know, uh, for all things kind of in foreign currencies. So yes, they can be used abroad. Um, da, 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 uh, uh, do you need to use software as well? Uh, I'll let, actually, this is an interesting one. Maybe I'll hand, hand that one over to Emma in a sec. There's a few, will there ever be contactless payments through the app, using the app? Ah, assume this question is around whether or not you'll be able to accept contactless payments. Yes, that's something we're working on at the moment. So it's quite an exciting area. We will allow people to do so. Not, we're both looking at two different ways of doing this, both point of sale. So if you're trying to collect a car payment right then and there, but also um, through invoices as well. Um, and uh, gosh, um, how big is the Thai team now? I've been here since the start. Oh, well, great. Me too, actually, for this question. I joined Tide about four years ago. So I joined Tide when there was about 10 people. Now we're up to around about 600. So yes, a big company. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay, one, was one, I'll do one more and then I'm going to hand over to Emma because these questions are coming quicker than I can answer them. But I've got a question <laughs> from David, which is, just tried to send my first invoice out earlier, which is an excellent tool. However, I couldn't string between the materials and VAT on the cost. Am I doing something wrong? So actually, then I'm, uh, this is... If you, go to the, if you go to your profile section and under company details, you'll see a VAT number field. If you enter in your VAT number there, automatically the invoice template will update so that for every line item, you're asked to enter the VAT as well. So yes, you can enter that specifically and choose your VAT rate, but you need to enter a non-zero, basically a, a value in that VAT number field before it's automatically enabled in your invoice. So I suggest you give that go, David. Um, okay, cool. I, I best stop there, otherwise I'd just go on and on and on. Uh, Emma, do you want to um, kind of go through some of the individual questions we've had on? Um, yes. Uh, can I start with one of them, which is, there's a good question here, which is, do you need to use software like Xero? Is it possible to keep track of um, just using Tide? It's an interesting question, right? Where Xero is, of course, has more extensive uh, features and is certainly better suited for complex, larger businesses. However, Tide does allow basic expensing invoicing uh, tools. And what we find is that um, in the same way about 30% of uh, businesses do without an accountant, right? Or mm -hmm. you know, whether they should or shouldn't is an interesting question. I'm sure Emma has strongly yeah. <laughs> yeah. And about 55% of businesses manage without cloud accounting software. Now, these are tools that cost money. 
um, but they do help you run your business. Now, Typeify is basic tools, and we know a lot of our business, a lot of our members get by without because they're able to use the basic tools on Type, which are suitable for some people. So uh, this was question was anonymous, but really depends on your circumstances, and there's no fixed answer. Absolutely. And I think it depends on how quickly you're growing as well, because actually it's quite complicated to switch onto a software partway through an accounting year. In, in honesty, it can create quite a lot more work trying to get it all onto one platform so that you can look at what your income and expenses are. Um, so, I, and I completely agree. I think when you're starting up a business, you are very careful of those costs initially. But if you're going to start on one thing i would almost keep it and only change at a year end um and that can be a year end picked by you you know um but you you have to have it in mind if you suddenly think actually i'm going to outgrow this quite quickly i would try and get on one of the basic versions from the beginning just because otherwise you can end up trying to backfill information because you want your historic customer and supplier information on there so i think it is something just to give careful thought to because as you say Ali, you can you can manage these things without using something like zero but it does depend on how you're growing and and what you're hoping to achieve from it and all those software costs they are deductible you know they are an expense of the business but as Ali said they are an expense so you just need to it's just about proper planning i think mm. so we've got um, another question about whether you can claim your expenses and just do them on your tax return each year. I mean, it really depends on how you're, how you're set up. You know, with a limited company, you would put those through the limited company. If you're a sole trader, yes, all your expenses go against your income on your tax return. But it is important just to keep a good track of those um, throughout the year rather than leave it to sort of self-assessment time. Right, let me run through the shout if you see a question that's made. Uh, right, what have we got? So we've answered that one. Ah, so we've got is if your business address is the same as home address and the car is also the same, what can you claim? Well, obviously, I think you've just got to think about the costs that you are incurring. I mean, obviously, for anyone working from home, you know all your trips actually out of your workplace, which is your home, are business related. And um, the same as, you know, your bills will be higher at home because you're working from home. You know, I'm sure we all will feel that when we get our winter electric bill, we'll have all had the heating on more and uh, and been using the Wi-Fi a lot, a lot more. So it's just running through all those things and thinking about what would have been a reasonable cost before you worked at home and actually what is likely to have increased. And, you know, with all these types of things, it's, it's being reasonable. So long as you're not taking, you know, really taking advantage and pushing everything to what I would call an incredibly grey area place, then, then you're fine to claim it. You've just got to have sort of just justification for what you're doing, really. But you definitely can claim, despite the fact that your home and car is all registered from your personal address. Ah, so I've got another one that's like, what percentage of your mortgage and rent are allowed for business owners to claim when working from home? Well, actually, your mortgage, um, you don't you don't really claim that just because otherwise you're making a personal expense business related and it can have some tricky capital gains tax complications. But obviously, if you were renting and you'd got a specific room dedicated to the office. So what they normally say is you'd look at the number of rooms in the house discount bathrooms discount kitchen and then the rooms that are left you would almost divvy it up by floor space i mean i don't know many people that actually do that calculation they would normally say all oh, right there's four rooms i'll take a take a quarter um, but that's that's how they generally go about applying that role and can i just chip in here i got sorry one last thing which is someone asking for automated invoice chasing um so it's an invoicer here who can, it can be hard to person chase the money, um, it can be applied for new business. So watch this space. In fact, we'll be making an announcement later this week, I hope, on a new invoice chasing feature, um, which, uh, so yes, uh, we have something in our kind of limited, uh, available for a limited cohort at the moment for testing, but plan to roll that out later this week. So watch this space. 
Fantastic. I, th I think that that's a really great idea. We see actually, sorry, I'm going to go madly off topic now, but we see that where people chase their invoices automatically, they tend to get paid at least six days earlier on average. So yes, uh, there's a can be a very useful thing if you're a B2B business who raises invoices. Absolutely, and it's just be, it's just polite reminders, isn't it? You know, it's just making sure that it's been logged in someone else's system for payment by a certain date. You know, I, I think people get a bit scared of credit control because they think it's like aggressive demands for money, but you're just actually checking that the invoice was received and that they know that it's due for payment soon and people are busy and it's just just polite reminders, isn't it? The automatic chasing. So I think that's a great idea. Um, we've actually got one here that says, can I include flight tickets as an expense? Well, yes, absolutely. If you are traveling for business, all your travel costs are claimable. Um, if you are taking your other half along with you though, their ticket would not be claimable. So, you know, you book those things separately rather than them being together. But yeah, business trips, um, and I always think actually the meals that come with those business trips are fairly subjective as well. Now, if, if you're treating yourself to a three course meal with a bottle of wine, um, you know, that's probably a bit excessive. But actually, if you're having just a steak and a glass of red, then abs absolutely. You know, it's, it's, it's all about reasonableness with expenses. You know, would you be spending that? normally would you spend it if it was someone else's money and you had to justify that expense claim really that's a good way of checking isn't it cool thank you very much emma um i'm going to leave you both to maybe just have a skim through the latest the last questions and just take uh to each um yourself as 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 the last questions in the meantime let me just uh reply to one or two uh will these links be sent via email too so um all you will all receive a, a wrap-up email with all the links to our um, social media channels so uh, no worries for those ones you will get them but please do make sure the uh, the two um resources that i've uh, sent from emma please make sure to to keep those so that you have them and you don't miss out and also the second questions I wanted to take is, does the cashback account uh, run alongside the premium account? So um, those are two different memberships, but if you want to talk to um, your account, premium account manager about um, you know, uh, changing your membership, please do reach out. They'd be more than happy um, to help you uh, do that and explain to you the differences. Great. Um, Emma, is there a question you want, one or two questions you wanted to take? Um, yeah, there was just there was just a, one more about sort of an iPad for business and things. So yeah, any of that stuff goes, if you're a sole trader, go straight on your tax return as an asset and actually you get 100% relief against your expenses for the year. So um, as it's Cyber Monday, if any of you are looking to update your IT equipment before the tax year ends. So if you're a sole trader, the tax year ends on the 5th of April. So any little expenses like that, they all help keep the tax town. So. Fantastic. Thank you, Emma. And uh, was there another question or Ali, was there another question you wanted to take maybe? Uh, just a single one. Uh, how are we doing for time? Time Val would be, um, I just have one, which is, uh, saying kept to present, prevent misuse because the team cards only could be only be active during certain times. It's an interesting question. It's um, uh, one that we've sort of considered. We're going to focus on transaction limits for the time being, but yes, absolutely. We are aware of some expensing tools which limit um, the, single, the amount of the transaction, but also the time as well. Um, that one requires a little bit of thought because of course time zones make that, can make it a little bit tricky if you have uh, team members on board. But yes, it's certainly something we'll think about as a feature optimization in the future. Um, probably it from me at the moment, Val. Fantastic. Okay, um, we have uh, time for a last question. If um, any of you have one that they haven't answered yet. Um, okay, no, I think we are all good. Emma, is there, um, are we um, able to um, let our attendees know where they can reach out to you guys if they had more questions they wanted to ask a body accountants? Yeah, absolutely. So if you click on our website link, there's an inquiries box and you can send any of your inquiries into there. We're always happy to talk to people about um, sort of any of their concerns set up, how they should be doing things. So we tend to have kind of initial discussions free of charge with people just to give them a bit of advice really on steering them in the right direction. So we're yeah, happy to talk to you. It's inquiries at a4g-llp.co.uk. 
Fantastic. Thank you so, so much, Emma. Um, I think this is all we have time for in terms of questions. If there's any Tide members that have uh, questions related to Tide, please do send us uh, an in-app chat uh, or reach out to us at hello at tide.co. We are happy to help and answer any questions you may have as well. Um, now, um, thanks for all these brilliant questions. Uh, it is time to bond to our raffle. So if you have ordered a team card between Wednesday and last night, you have been entered in our prize draw. So please do um, open your Tide app and check uh, your in-app messages. Uh, we are sending a message now to the three winners. One winner gets £300, second winner gets £200, and the third winner gets £100. Uh, do feel free to comment in the chat room if you're one of the lucky three. Um, so we can congratulate you. Um, we, uh, we, we really do hope um, this is going to be a bit of a boost and help um, during this Cyber Monday um, to buy that piece of equipment maybe uh, you were waiting to buy, as uh, Emma mentioned before. Um, so, um, yes, um, thank you again all so, so much um, for uh, joining us today. Um, I don't think we have any, um, um, any more chat on, um, on the chat room, but I do hope the three winners um, are happy to receive their cash price and are going to be able to you know, boost a bit their, um, their, um, their equipment. In terms of um, today, I think we are uh, reaching the end of this masterclass. So I wanted to thank again all our wonderful panelists, Ali, Emma, thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you for, um, uh, you know, answering all our members' questions. And um, as uh, we were saying, please, uh, to all the attendees, do reach out to us if you have more questions and uh, do please keep an eye out uh, in your emails we will invite you to uh, our next session and our next master classes um, so that you can join us thank you again so much and have a great day thanks so thanks much for having me real thank pleasure you. thank you thank you all bye bye, bye.